This video tutorial is all about common misalignments in the steel mace athlete. The first misalignment that we'll talk about is misaligning the 360 swing. So a clean 360 swing, everyone always wants to go straight into 360s when they pick up a mace. Well, firstly, you should definitely start with ballistic switches to build awareness of your tool as a preparation to be able to handle the mace, especially if you don't have a lot of experience with mace. So in a ballistic switch, slide your hand down towards the globe, open both hands, pack your shoulders, crown to coccyx alignment, then slide the opposite hand down in an under over grip, rip and crush, pack your shoulders, and really get comfortable with your tool, the weight of your tool and the torque. Generally, when I have people start with a 360 swing, the clean one looks like this. Block, dump, pull, block, dump, one more time. Block, dump, pull. When you put a mace in the average person's hand, this is what the mace 360 attempt generally looks like. Clunk, clunk. Again, I'm dropping it behind the shoulder, I'm wood chopping it into position, and I'm achieving that in my mind, but in reality, I'm really implementing a poor motor pattern. So. The thing that will help you clean that up is learning how to do what's called a shield cast. So shield cast, here's a club. You can use a dowel, you can use a broomstick, you can use a piece of wood or some sort of club like or a lighter mace is great too. So elements of shield casting. First, I have my overhead cast. So arm is 90 degrees. You can do these from standing to mimic the swing, eight to 10 reps. Second phase, find my external rotation because a big reason why that 360 swing looks so clunky is because I don't actually have the shoulder range of motion to be able to get my arms overhead and perform a, a clean swing. So I've got my external rotation, then I've got my modified side flag back to order. Keep the arm 90 degrees, swivel into external rotation, glide the mace into your, your backpack here, and then back out. Once you've cleared those two drills, let's put those together in what's called a shield cast. So I go back position, open out, modified side flag. Back position, close it up, shield cast to order. Shield cast to side flag, shield cast order, feeling like a ninja, eventually moving with a little bit more speed. Notice how this range is very similar to a 360 swing. So the only difference between my shield cast that I just learned, where I'm going to modified side flag to order, is now I'm landing in prayer, right? So I shield cast back, modified side flag, shield cast center, landing in prayer. Ideally, you would do that on both sides, but for the sake of this video and brevity, I'm gonna uh, go right into the demo. So now I've done my shield cast with a light load. As I apply that to my 360 swing, uh, with the mace, hopefully that allows my arm, so you can see it's doing that same mechanics. Whew, here, shield casting into prayer. Couple more tricks for getting comfortable with having your mace actually swing. So I recommend take your mace down like this, pr practice a relaxed grip, and let your mace globe move from side to side. Notice, I'm trying to get my globe to move 180 degrees, and I'm kind of absorbing that shock with a tiny bit of sway in my lower half, not a lot. So, once you've got the feeling of what that feels like to truly swing it instead of muscle it, perform your 360, block, big swing, dump and pull. Block, dump, pull. You can also swing it behind your back. This, for beginners, can be a little scary because they feel like they're gonna hit their low back. So notice, my body has to rotate a little tiny bit with the mace, and as the mace peaks at that high position, I can pull it into order here. Block, dump, and pull. So those are some tips that you can clean up your 360 swing. I'm gonna go through one more little tutorial for uppercuts, because I see a lot of folks really slaughter the uppercut, and I really wanna help you guys out. I want you to perform clean uppercuts where you're getting the full engagement, so let's break it down. And remember, super important that you always start with the basics, so always start with the level one, especially if you're training with us at the Floshala Virtual Studio. Listen to your coaches, do those level one exercises, and master them first. So a clean uh, uppercut lunge looks like this. So you can start in feet hip distance apart, you move through cross body bottom, pull the mace into over over grip, uh, goal post position, pack your shoulders, hips are squared, come back down through cross body bottom and over over grip. So again, 
cross body bottom first, pull, 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 pull the mace apart, land in the uppercut position, goal post arms, check your back hand, see that wrists are neutral. So, common misalignments for the uppercut. I see this all the time. I'm sure if you're a coach or you're just getting started with mace, we've all been there. Um, so oftentimes people will really lose spatial awareness. So one arm might be straight or jagged, this arm might be bent, or really the, the 90 degree arms are just non-existent. There's no torque. Another com common misalignment I see is this. So the wrist coming into deep extension versus being neutral. So to clean that up, let's try it on the other side. Look at yourself in a mirror. Come through your landmarks. You've got your cross body bottom, your upper cut. Check it out, memorize that. You can rotate your mace to the front position, hold, rip and crush, and then just rotate it to the side. You can perform reps of that here to here. Notice my hips stay facing straight ahead the whole time. You can also perform your internal external rotation, keeping the arms um, equidistant, moving from the arm bone in the socket. And eventually over time, you can integrate that into either a static lunge, cross body bottom, Uppercut, bend the back leg, return to the starting position. So level one, uppercut lunge. Take it slow, find those mechanics, peek at your backhand, check those wrists. Breathing out the whole time is great as well. If you're performing your uppercut lunge, see that your body is in upright position. You're not leaning forward, you're not tipping back, but you're just plumb line in the center sides. Eventually over time, add a little speed. And let's say your arms are still doing something wonky. You're not quite able to get it. Highly recommend making yourself a wooden mace with a dowel you can get at a construction store. Uh, this is a plastic dowel, but you can buy like a wooden dowel that's a circle and just glue it on there or screw it on there, however you'd like. And then work the mechanics, especially on your low and mod days with your lighter mace. It makes a huge difference, especially for 360 swings. And if you have injuries or you really need to work on mapping those patterns, using a wooden dowel for a mace is really gonna help you take the fear component out of it and just really, really work those mechanics. All right, hopefully you learned a little something for your mace practice. Check us out at the virtual studio at Flow Shala and keep in touch if you have any questions. We've got lots of seminars throughout the year where we are coaching new coaches on steel mace vinyasa level one and level two. We'll see you in the virtual studio soon.